Today we're going to be making a little bit of copper hydroxide, which is used commercially as a fungicide or a pigment, but I'm not really interested in that, and I'm actually going to be using it to make something called Schweizer's Reagent. I've actually already made a video about Schweizer's Reagent, and what makes it so special is that it's one of the few things that can actually dissolve cellulose. Most of you are probably not familiar with exactly what cellulose is, but it's basically an insoluble sugar that comes in many different forms. The dietary fiber that you eat, the paper you use to write on, and the cotton clothing that you wear are all made of cellulose. So with the copper hydroxide that we make in this video, we're going to go on to make some Schweizer's reagent, and with that, we will be dissolving clothing, paper, and other forms of cellulose. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent about the Schweizer's reagent, so without further delay, I'm going to get started in the preparation. For this preparation, we need a few things. We need aqueous ammonia, also known as ammonium hydroxide. We need some sodium hydroxide, and we need some copper sulfate. The ammonia that's used could in theory be any concentration. I've included the cleaning ammonia on the left, which is around 10%, and the stronger ammonia on the right, which is around 30%. Interchanging terms can get a little bit confusing, so I'm not going to call it ammonium hydroxide, and I'm going to exclusively call it aqueous ammonia. Anyway, for this reaction, I personally use the 30% aqueous ammonia solution, but you could also use the 10% one, and you just have to use three times the amount. Now for the other ingredients, they're pretty basic. At the bottom left, we have our copper sulfate pentahydrate, and at the bottom right, we have some sodium hydroxide. I bought the copper sulfate from eBay, but it can also be found in some stores as stump remover, and the sodium hydroxide is sold as drain cleaner. I started off by adding about 50 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate to a beaker. I then added in about 500 milliliters of distilled water to dissolve the copper sulfate. I have a magnetic stir bar inside and a magnetic stir plate below, so I turned that on to get things mixing. Eventually all of the copper sulfate dissolved, and you may not be able to see it here, but there was a lot of impurity floating around. The person that I bought my copper sulfate from clearly wasn't selling super high quality stuff and there was a bunch of insoluble impurities left over. To get rid of the impurities it's pretty simple and I just do a very fast vacuum filtration. So I just quickly pull a vacuum and pull everything through and you can see all of the faintly yellow impurities that are left behind on the filter. So now that our solution is free of insoluble impurities, I transfer the copper sulfate solution to a 1 liter beaker. To the copper sulfate solution is then poured in about 50 milliliters of 30% aqueous ammonia. As we add the ammonia, it will initially make this light blue precipitate, which is our copper hydroxide, but as we add more, it will gradually take on a darker and darker color. This is because in total, we're actually adding an excess of ammonia, and ammonia forms a dark blue complex with copper hydroxide. So basically what happens is as we add the ammonia and it reacts with the copper sulfate, the amount of copper sulfate present will slowly decrease. Eventually we'll reach a point where there's little to no copper sulfate left, and any ammonia that we add after this point will instead just complex with the copper hydroxide that's present. So you see as we add more, the light blue color of the copper hydroxide slowly fades, and we're eventually left with a nearly black solution. What's actually kind of interesting is the complex that's formed between ammonia and copper hydroxide to give this dark blue color is actually Schweizer's reagent. The only thing is this solution is pretty dilute and it has a lot of sulfate ions floating around, so it's not exactly pure Schweizer's reagent. I've honestly never tried it though, but I think that if you put a little bit of cotton or another form of cellulose in it, it can probably dissolve it at least to some extent. Anyway, I let this stir for several minutes, and in the meantime, I moved on to making a sodium hydroxide solution. The sodium hydroxide solution is pretty simple to make, and it just involves dissolving about 16 grams of sodium hydroxide in roughly 200 milliliters of distilled water. After stirring it for a few minutes, we should be left with a perfectly clear solution. The sodium hydroxide is then dumped all at once into our dark blue ammonia copper hydroxide solution. Immediately when the sodium hydroxide solution is added, copper hydroxide starts to precipitate out. After all of the sodium hydroxides added, we're left with a lot of very nice light blue copper hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide breaks apart the complex that formed between ammonia and copper hydroxide, and it serves to fully precipitate all of our copper hydroxide from solution. It should be noted though that in theory, you could just add the sodium hydroxide solution directly to the copper sulfate, but for some reason, the results aren't very good. 
I've tried it a few times and every time that I tried, it never formed the nice light blue color of copper hydroxide. It had sort of a slimy texture to it, which made it impossible to filter. And on top of this, if you didn't work with it quick enough, it became dark green or black as it oxidized. So for whatever reason, when sodium hydroxide is used directly on copper sulfate, the product is not very good quality and it seems to be a little bit unstable. I let it stir for several minutes and then I allowed it to stand for all of the copper hydroxide to sink to the bottom. Eventually, most of the copper hydroxide had sank to the bottom and I decanted off the upper water layer. After we've poured off most of the water, we can move on to our filtration step. For this I used a vacuum filtration setup, but in theory you could do a gravity filtration as well. The process here is pretty simple and I just transferred everything to the flask, pull a vacuum and remove pretty much all of the water. Once all the water had been removed, more water was added to wash the copper hydroxide and this process was repeated a few times. Now our copper hydroxide should be relatively clean and free of ammonia and sulfate ions, but we still need to dry it up and to do this I use some acetone. By washing with acetone, we can get rid of the water, but the acetone is much more volatile, so once we're done here, we can just let the copper hydroxide sit out in air and it will dry pretty easily. With each acetone washing, I use a glass stir rod to stir the copper hydroxide around and make sure that I break up any large chunks. When I was satisfied that there were no large chunks, I pulled the vacuum and removed all of the acetone. I then added more acetone and repeated the process of breaking up any large chunks, and in total, the washing steps were repeated two or three times. After all of the acetone had been removed, we're left with a semi-dry paste. The rest of the acetone will be removed by evaporation, and to do this, I transfer all of the copper hydroxide to a large dish. I left it out to dry, and every so often I came around with a metal spatula and broke up the larger chunks. Eventually I was left with nice, light, blue copper hydroxide powder. The yield in the end was about 20 grams, which is actually above 100% yield, which to me indicates that the powder is still probably a little bit wet. This is okay though, because we're using the copper hydroxide to make Schweizer's reagent, which requires mixing it with aqueous ammonia. I've actually already finished filming the Schweizer reagent video, and that should be the next one that I upload. So as usual, a big thanks goes out to all of my supporters on Patreon, but I have to give a very special thanks to everyone who donated $5 or more. Like I said in a previous video, I kind of have too many $5 supporters to realistically read out each of your names, but just know that I still love you all.